This right here is the update on your boy Straight Drop, man, in the Young Dolph case, man. He had got sentenced. He was found guilty, man. And um, they saying that, you know, he's got an X amount of time. And what they did, they put an extra 35 years on top of his sentence. So he got life and he has 35. So his lawyer was saying that, you know, this dude's going to be getting out when he in his 70s, man. And they're trying to reduce that sentence up a little bit because that's the time that he might be eligible to have parole once he's 70-something. Now, this is crazy, y'all. Like, them dudes did that. And, and, and the sad thing is this dude only had maybe couple of months of fame they was allegedly saying that he was supposed to be signing a deal you know with your god in there for doing this you know after he you know agreed to unalive young Dolph and uh you know he got the bag and allegedly what they saying is he got the bag he ain't really give out no money to the people. One of the guys that did more work than him, he only paid him $800. So he's locked in too for $800. Your boy straight drop, you know, he was flashing and styling and doing videos. He was supposed to be doing a deal with, you know, with Yo Gotti and them. And then he got picked up. So he only lived for three, two, three months free as a, you know, a person that's supposed to be signed. And, um, now this dude is doing time, man. They saying he's gonna get out when he's about seventy something years old, man. And uh he looking crazy in that courtroom, man. Y'all gotta see this. Uh it's gonna be an update on the rest of them. I already know they're gonna have some time, including the girl, man. They all about to be fried, man. Well, the girl, she she might not get time, but they were saying back then allegedly the the Makita's cookie shop, the the uh the daughter had something to do with it, you know, um, even the, the, the dad, the owner or whatever, you know, he was supposed to have something to do with it because they were cool with CMG and all of this, but we're going to see that, you know, come together as well, but right now, the, the, the killers, they, they done for, man, that's a high profile dude, man, they should have had, got paid way more than that, I mean, they was even saying, like, about, uh, Young boy, when when young boy had you know Quando Rondo and all of them, you know they they did what they did and they got a million dollars for it. You know what I mean? Um, no question. So yeah, they should have been paid way more than that. And this is all because allegedly yo yo guy didn't want to sign him and he didn't want to do the deal. He didn't want to sell out and then. They was taunting each other, and it was going back and forth, back and forth, man. And your boy, Young Dolph, was just blowing up, man. He was elevating, man, doing his thing, man. And, you know, they ain't want to see him doing that, man, especially not being signed to a major label, man. This dude had an independent label, man, that he was running, getting them big bags, them M's, man. And they took this dude out for 100 k that's sad, man. Like, he could have gave him a couple watches for that, man. And they would have had more than 100K, man. You know, for his life to be taken away. So, yeah, they gave your boy this time, man. And y'all got to check this out and let me know what y'all think in the comments, man. And uh, let's talk about this one, man, on what y'all think is going to happen moving forward. And, uh, yeah, hit that subscribe button, man. I appreciate all y'all support, man. Couldn't do it without y'all, man. Telling you, I appreciate all that love, man. Um, I'm going to get back with y'all on this one, man. This is something crazy, man. Your boy, he, he gave himself away, man, for a couple of months of time of uh, flossing, man. You know, and it's a sad situation that this stuff had to go down like that. So, your boy, your got it, man. Like I said, he's staying, he's staying quiet. Black youngsters, he's staying quiet. They ain't making no noise. You know, uh, Angela Simmons, she need to just watch out, man. Uh, hanging out with him, she don't need to be caught up in no kind of twine or situation with that, man. Moving forward, man. And uh, 
Otherwise, it's going to be some Rico's, man. Big Rico, man. And I already know what the time that your boy just got. He going to start telling, man. He know he going to be either old when he get out or he's not going to live to get out. So you already know he's going to talk. He's going to talk. He asked for another one, you know, another hearing, man. So he's not happy about what he's hearing as far as the verdicts go. So he's asking for another hearing. So that's letting you know right there. He's willing to talk. If they willing to accept that under certain conditions on more information, more insight, if you have it, if he ain't already provided it already, anything extra, man, to try to reduce that, they're going to ask for it, man, for him to talk. So y'all get back at me on this one, man. Let me know what y'all think, man. Peace, love, happiness, man. I'm out. I'm going to find and sentence Mr. Johnson on a conspiracy to commit first degree murder. 35 years. That's a range two offender. Convicted felon in possession of a firearm, I'm going to sentence him to 15 years as a range two offender. me to find that the defendant is an offender whose record of criminal activity is extensive. They've also asked me to find that he, or to find that he is a dangerous offender whose behavior indicates little or no regard for human life and no hesitation about committing a crime in which the risk to human life is high. to protect society from the defendant's unwillingness to lead a productive life and the defendant's resort to criminal activity in furtherance of an anti-societal lifestyle. And the aggregate length of the sentences reasonably relate to the offense of which the defendant stands convicted. argues as to the, the defender having a record of criminal activity that is extensive, that the court can consider not just his prior history, which the court's already talked about, the three prior aggravated robberies, excuse me, three prior aggravated assaults in the federal firearms case but also 
with first degree murder conspiracy to commit first degree murder and convict a felon in possession of a handgun. It's unfortunate that we've uh, witnessed Mr. Johnson's progression in violent activity. Um, he's had these prior convictions which dealt with firearms, which dealt with violence in, in the lack of regard for human life. And it didn't get any better, it got worse. A whole lot worse. Uh, he was found guilty of first degree murder, conspiracy to commit first degree murder, and a felon in possession of a firearm. Mm -hmm. But there's two more trials coming. Cornelia Smith, who was in the car during the mm -hmm. shooting, and there's also Hernandez Govan, who they say was somehow involved in masterminding it, but from what I understand, he's going to be let free. He's going to get probation or something like that, or time served. But as more information is coming out, there was a list of people that Big Jook, you know, allegedly put hits on. Yeah. You know, like you said, Young Dolph was 100,000. Uh, Key Glock, who was the second biggest artist on the label, was 50,000. Mm. P.R.E. Wu, 50,000. Snoop Bands, 20,000. And Moochie Great, 5,000. Mm. So he was allegedly putting hits on a whole bunch of people. And then ultimately he got killed himself. Yeah. I and... You know, not just killed, but like the way that he was killed was, you know, very gruesome and brutal. You know, they they caught him after a funeral. Um, you know, sh there there was a rumor going around that the shooting happened in front of his mother, and you know, the footage of Juke bleeding out on the ground was even circulating on social media. So it was a very gruesome way, and it, it, it's I don't, you know I don't condone that kind of behavior in any way, but it is very messed up and ironic that you know Dolph got killed on camera, Juke got killed on camera, you know, for the whole world to see. Sometimes you hear these hip hop stories, these drill gangster stories where people go back and forth. I mean, even the King Von situation, you know, there's, there's a pretty twisted poetic irony in the fact that, you know, Duck got killed on camera and these guys were laughing about it for months. Next thing you know, Von's dying on camera, you know, damn near in the same kind of, same kind of way. Um, and, you know, for that to have happened to Dolph and Juke, you know, it just shows that if that's the energy you put out, that's the energy that can come back around for you. And, you know, it's, it's really a shame that there's so much negativity in this this culture but then that's that's the way with this this gangster rap stuff you know it, it is really like that and unfortunately that's what's going on yeah man it's stupidity and, and i mean to be honest like i'm sure big juke in his final moments his last few thoughts was why did i do this it's not that serious and now i'm dying over a song over an insult mm -hmm. over just a bunch of nonsense and now his mother, who was right there, and I'm sure he's looking at his mother going, wow, you're going to have to live with this because I wanted to be a gangster when I didn't have to be a gangster anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, really, Yo Gotti created a situation where nobody had to do this anymore. But yet, this is what happened. And you have losses on both sides. And you have kids on both sides. And you have mothers and fathers on both sides. And siblings and fans and everything. And it's it's just sad, man. I mean, I've interviewed Yo Gotti before. And uh, we, we have an interview with Young Dolph. I didn't do the interview myself, but it's on Vlad TV. And, uh, yeah, it's just sad. It's just sad. It's messed up. And I really hope that people just grow up a little bit. You know, learn this. Take this as a growing up lesson. That it's really not that serious. I totally agree with you. You know, obviously, look, it, it, it's it's so tragic for everybody involved, for the families, for the fans. You know, just think of all the amazing music that the world's missing out on because Dolph's no longer with us. Who knows what's going to happen on the other side? You never know. Yo, Yo Gotti might get wrapped up in this and end up serving a long sentence in jail. That's another person that's not releasing music, not supporting for their people. And like you say, you know, uh, not to disrespect anyone, but it, it is kind of childish. It is kind of immature. When you think about, you know, what were you put on this earth for? But the nigga right here, man, he was mine letting that motherfucker Draco it, loose. He yeah, he was trying to hit some shit, but... Right, I would have run, run down the street behind that ass with that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> nah, look, look, look. He's so fucking right now. Why they handcuffing him, though? I don't know. Cause he won't, he won't leave. Stay.
admitted to what he did and said, you don't need to indict me. I'll agree to my charges because he had no record. He was range one, which is three to six years because there were three people involved. He pled guilty to five years in prison and agreed not to ask for probation. He agreed to go to prison. Kraft says because Johnson was so well behaved in prison, he was given probation and released. After six months, he filed a petition to ask for probation because he'd done all these classes and he'd gotten arranged to have a job with a painting company when he got out and done all this and came to court and everyone agreed. We didn't even have a hearing. Everyone agreed that he had no record, that he admitted to what he did and he had done all this stuff while in prison and they agreed to put him on probation. Obviously, you're supposed to get 40000 Right. But you got $500 and a left. Yeah, I, I picked up the money from up and I saw how much wood. I'm like, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. You could spend that on pills and one day. Yeah, it's over. You did. I can pay it. And this first payment is when you get back from Atlanta. Yeah. All right. Is that the only time you got any money from Justin? Nah, uh, a couple of days later. Uh, I was in the city or whatever, and he was saying that uh, he was going to have a folk pull up on me, bring me, bring me some money or whatever, hold, hold me down. So, I think he been pulled up about $20,000, $30,000, you know what I mean? But, uh, I had my girl to get out the top, and she met the person. He said they had their fake mask on, so we don't know who it was, but they got $300. $300. You know? okay. All right, so now we've been paid about $800. Yeah. Is that right? Man sentenced to life in prison for killing young Dolph gets 35 more years tacked onto his sentence, meaning Justin Johnson could be in his 70s before he's even considered for parole. Good evening, and thanks for joining us. I'm Greg Hurst. Hello, I'm Stephanie Skurlock. The additional sentences were handed down in court this morning. WRG's April Thompson was there as the judge described Johnson's crime as one full of envy and greed. Justin Johnson was already convicted and sentenced to life for the killing of Memphis rapper Young Dolph. Friday, he was back in court for sentencing on two additional charges, conspiracy to commit the murder and being a convicted felon in possession of a handgun. Prosecutors stress Johnson already has several aggravated assault convictions, extreme criminal behavior, and is a danger. The risk of life to individuals other than the victim in the case but Johnson's attorney said additional years to a life sentence would be excessive. He maintained Johnson was never a leader in this crime. The individuals that were on the ground in front of that cookie store that day were not leaders in an offense. They were manipulated by others. Judge Jennifer Mitchell went back over testimony about the killing of young Dolph three years ago outside Makita's Cookies on Airways, saying Johnson showed a lack of regard for life. These were crimes that were committed in our community in the middle of the day, in broad daylight, other people around. She sentenced Johnson to 35 years for conspiracy and 15 for being a felon with a handgun to be run concurrent to each other. They will be served consecutive with the life sentence he already had. I think today's result, you know, sends a very useful message that uh, this kind of violence won't be tolerated and we will do what we need to do to make sure that people who are dangerous stay locked up so they can't get out onto the streets again. But Johnson's attorney maintains his client is innocent. He has already filed a motion to get a new trial. For your news leader in downtown Memphis, April Thompson, WREG News Channel. So Mr. Johnson, by that count, has three aggravated assault convictions, federal firearms conviction, murder in the first degree conviction, a conspiracy to commit murder in the first degree conviction, and a second convicted felon in possession of a handgun conviction. Seven all serious, all violent convictions. So seven serious, mostly violent convictions, and the state would ask your honor to find that is, in fact, a record of extensive criminal behavior that should mandate consecutive sentencing in this case. We've also asked your honor to find that he's a dangerous offender. This is a man who was not motivated by fear. He's not motivated I hate. This was a paid-for hit in the middle of the day, an open men's business, literally a cookie store, the assassination of an unarmed innocent man. This is
is an update on the Young Dolph case. As, as you guys may know, Young Dolph was gunned down on November 21st, 2021 at a cookie store in Memphis. There have been rumors and, and speculation that Yo Gotti's brother by the name of Big Juke, pictured above, that he, you know, put a hit out on Young Dolph. Pro- prosecutors is accusing Big Juke it's saying that he put a hit out on Young Dolph and they're currently trying these two, Justin Johnson and Cornelia Smith, saying that they are telling them that Big Jook is the person that put the hit out on Young Dolph. This is all going on in the trial, uh, in, the, in their trial for the murder of Young Dolph. The backstory is that Young Dolph was asked to sign a record label which was cocaine music at the time but it's now known as collective music group which is cmg you know you might hear in yo Gotti's songs but cmg so he was asked to sign to cmg Uh, young Dolph didn't want to sign and he ended up writing a diss track and he directed it towards big jook and so you know then the twist of events the young Dolph is killed november 21st 2021 then we have Big Jook, who is killed in January of 2020, 2024, which people are saying is the retaliation since word got around street that he put the hit out on Young Dolph. And, you know, he's self-proclaimed the king of Memphis. So now prosecutors are saying that these two defendants are, you know, saying that they did this because Big Jook put a $100,000 hit out on Young Dolph, which... Cornelia Smith only received $800 prior to being locked up. After he was locked up, he claims that his attorney fee of $50,000 was paid by Big Jook. And other than that, he didn't see any money. So he didn't got himself in trouble and he didn't did all of this over $800. Like he took somebody's life over $800. So Cornelia Smith said, you know what? He didn't care. He didn't mind taking Young Dolph's life because he had just lost his young child and he started taking some prescription medicines and he really didn't care about anything until he sobered up in jail, in his cell. You know, he got a little clean. Well, he got clean in his jail cell and his conscience set in. And that's when I guess he just decided to start telling everything. You know, the and the thing off. that I don't think they realize is that no matter how much you tell on Big Jook and that he put a hit out on on young Dolph you're still gonna take this murder rap like you are an adult no nobody made you do this you feel what I'm saying so whether you was hard up on some money and you needed some cash and decided to do it you are about to go to prison for this and then on top of that you're gonna be labeled as a, a rat inside prison so it's going you're gonna be doing some hard time I don't think they understand that and this is a lesson to all the dudes in the hood who you know it's the streets over everybody this is how shit can turn out because you know they got that boy Cornelius Smith only received eight hundred dollars, and he thought that Big Jook was gonna come off that hundred thousand dollars after he got the you know the job done. And then this is not the only thing is that Yo Gotti, this is Yo Gotti's brother. Big Jook is Yo Gotti's brother, and so you know Angela Simmons is running around riding around with Yo Gotti and all of that. You know he got her riding around Memphis and you know thinking everything's cool but it's honestly not because they can retaliate again like who's to, who who's to say when enough is enough so i feel like she should be laying low i mean the, you know she the, he got her thinking she part of the street life she pulled up to the bet awards with this little fake gun purse and then had to issue an apology so i and then you know this ain't her first rodeo with these hood dudes because her first her baby daddy he ended up getting killed at a nightclub and he was on he was on some street stuff too and so yeah it's just a lot going on with that Gotti family right now I mean she I, she should definitely be watching looking over her shoulder because you know they could accidentally try to hit her and and you know trying to hit him you feel what I'm saying so I just feel like there's nobody to say okay well they killed his brother so that's gonna be enough well to some people in yo in um young Dolphins team maybe that's not enough maybe they took their everything maybe like oh no we gotta come for everybody else in your family too because uh, that big joke wasn't enough we don't care what he did you know what I mean maybe his brother maybe they might think that his brother has something to do with who knows but this street stuff is deep and this ain't even the first run-in that young Dolph had he was shot multiple times in September of 2021 and you know he made it out alive but it's just sad that his family's now mourning his death 
because of a diss track and then eight hundred dollars for somebody's life is absolutely crazy and you know that like he wasn't gonna pay you that much money like that like he came with eight hundred dollars he didn't even come with a band like he gave you eight hundred dollars after you just murdered somebody and then didn't help you he didn't help you get away or any of that so this is the street life though y'all drop a comment on what you think peace out well a lot has happened since our last interview and I think at the top of the news is the Young Dolph trial. Mm. And this is a train wreck. And just recently, Justin Johnson, a.k.a. Straight Drop, was found guilty. And is now sentenced to life for the murder of Young Dolph. Um, and from what I understand, in Memphis, life means at least 51 years. So this guy is like, I don't know, 30 years old. He'll get out at 80. That is, that's life. Yeah. That's your life's gone. That's your life. Yeah. What's your take on this whole situation? Man, it's very sad. I, I'd always been a really big fan of Young Dolph. You know, I feel like he was one of those artists that just, he made music that was just so motivational. You know, the en energy, like Young Dolph's one of those artists, man. You throw on that music in the gym and it just, just gives you a different kind of energy. You know, I was always such a huge fan of his. I feel like he was one of those people that really got love from the whole rap game. You know, so many people were big on Dolph and it was just such a tragedy when he passed away. And it's not just that, but it's like all the details of the case. You know, there's a lot of pictures floating around of Justin Johnson around Dolph um, before he died. You know, I think there's one like meme that's been going around since his conviction. It's that picture of them two together. And it's sort of saying like, you know, sometimes, you know, if the people closest to you are the ones that are going to stab you in the back or you never know what kind of hate or energy is around you. And I think this is really a, you know, a really sad example of that because young Dolph was really like, you know, really, obviously, you know, there's, yeah, you got the beef with Yo Gotti, but Young Dolph was just like the guy in his city. It was just like the movement that he had was just, just enormous. And I guess, you know, there's a, there's a lot of that kind of hating energy in the city and people wanted to take him down. It, it's, 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 it's very unfortunate what happened. And I think it's also very unfortunate for those involved for the degree of self snitching that went on afterwards. You know, Justin Johnson straight drop. He was releasing music very soon after that was hinting towards it. There was a very famous shot of him. I think he had the the PRE kind of chain on his belt that people were saying, you know, obviously PRE's Dolph's label. People were saying, yeah, it's a, he, he was wearing it like a notch on his belt. You know, these, I, I've got to be honest, some of these guys, it's actually impressive how creative they get when it comes to how they're going to drop some little message to diss someone they've killed or whatever like that. Um, you know, a big part of what's come out of the trial is that, you know, there was... I think it was a hundred thousand dollar bounty on Dolph, and then you know the money was meant to be split up. Someone was supposed to get what twenty or forty thousand. They got eight hundred dollars, and then the whole thing collapsed like a house of cards. I mean, it really just goes to show you how 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 much of a dead end the streets can really be. You know, I, I mean, I don't know how you could throw your life away for a hundred thousand dollars. I mean, we all love money for fifty thousand, whatever it is. Like for you to throw your life away, you know, he's not going to come out till he's eighty. I mean, good luck even making it to eighty in that environment. And, you know, for what? For the possibility of $100,000, you know, some clout in a music video. It's very sad. And then, you know, it breaks my heart, man. I see a picture on uh, social media the other day. I think it was Dolph with his son. And I think the caption was, it was, I can't remember the post, but it was saying something like, you know, Dolph's son's been really angry since he's died and he's been going through a lot. That photo just really touched me, man, because you're looking at Dolph's son and you just think, you know, for all these, these grown-ass men running around, you know, killing each other, doing all of this stuff and 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 you know someone like justin Justin johnson yeah he's going to be in jail till he's 80 but you know Dolph's son that's changed the trajectory of his entire life you know that's that's changed everything <laughs>